welcome everyone. We are going to begin the webinar, SATA, TRUSA, and LED Solution for Color Match and Inspection of Coverage. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact, Jim Kavitek, U.S. Sales and Technical for Dan Am Company, and Daniel Kirkner, Business Development Manager for Zimmerman Auto Body Supplies and Leader of C20 Refinish by Collision Hub are your presenters today. The presentation will take approximately 45 minutes. We are recording it and we'll make it available to everyone after the presentation. If you have questions, you can raise your hand in the control bar and I will unmute you, or you can type something in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen and we will answer them during the presentation. I want to start by saying I saw this presentation yesterday and it's excellent and it has information that every painter should know. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Daniel. All right, Melissa, thank you. Yeah, so kind of like you said there, um, uh, thanks for the introductory for both Jim and myself. And you're gonna notice some commonalities here as we go through this presentation. And you're gonna see some Repair University or, or Collision Hub graphics on there. And that's because this program that we're gonna go through today, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this part one, we're calling it all things color. And really what it is, is it's the way that we perceive color as uh, as people, as distribution, as painters, as preppers. And not only that, but the way that we're determining how to source this color. So you're gonna kind of see as these slides go on and they start to build up, we're gonna start with color the way we see color, and then we're gonna get into actual lighting source. So this is a really good all-in-one package. Generally, this uh, part one takes about an hour and a half, so we're gonna condense it down. I might talk a little faster than normal, but I do wanna have time at the end for questions if that comes up. So very quickly, what we're gonna talk about today is how we see color and why that matters. Utilizing technology, determining where the color matches is huge for us, whether you're a distribution or painter, this is, this is a huge takeaway for today. Talking about testing our ability. Um, the big thing we see in shops, is, and we can all attest to this, is that body men, they get training in some regard and, and preppers get training and estimators get training. But us as painters, the only training we get is, is at a, a paint training center. And that's it's not enough. We have to do more than that. And finally, we're gonna talk about kind of what we all you know, came here to see, which is color lights. And like I said, you're gonna see how all this information encompasses color lights. So the first thing we have to talk about is, is how we physically see color as people, right? And the thing that's interesting when we have, we have these conversations is whether you're a multi-line job or a single line job, or we can all relate to the same conversation where, okay, I have paint line one in 10 shops, Seven of these shops never have a problem. The other three have problems all the time with color. And when you start to think about that, you can start to make these decisions to figure out, okay, where is the problem actually coming from? Sure, it can be a toner. Sure, it can be application issues. But if we're able to put that all to the side, if we talk about source one, where is the issue coming from? Many times this comes back to the very beginning stage and it's the light source. So basically when you see color, it's a byproduct of the light that's hitting it. So it could be sun, clouds, incandescent lighting, fluorescent, all those things. So there's, the source is gonna dictate the spectrum of light in which we see color, and you'll see some examples of that. Natural light, meaning sunlight, is the most unobstructed form. So when you say unobstruction, what happens with light is it's gonna run in nanometers. So basically from right around 380 to 720 is what a human can pick up. And uh, basically in that, in that realm is the different lights that actually different colors that form light so when they're all uniform together you form pure white which is sunlight so that's what we're trying to achieve this is very important this is a great takeaway for painters uh for tech reps only one in 225 women are color deficient or color blind and one in 12 men are color deficient that's super important that that's if we have a, a woman in our shop is able to help us get a second set of eyes when we're kind of in between two chips or two spray outs this right here, that the data doesn't lie. So kind of back to the old school, grade school days, Roy G. Biv, the colors of light are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So we're going to see here momentarily why that is important. So what are we seeing and what are we not seeing with color? It's really interesting when you talk about this because you'll hear that white is, white is the absence of color. It's actually not. When you're talking about uh, light waves and you're talking about light temperatures, the color white itself is actually when you proportionately mix all the light waves one uniformly. So if you see this little 
um, diagram here on the right, you're going to see blue and red and green, your main colors, and then the colors they form together, your magenta, your cyan, and yellow. When we mix them all in a uniform um, ratio, the uh, wavelength, that forms a white light. So in your mind, if you're looking at this, the center of this is the goal point for what we're always using when it talks about color matching. White is the light that we want to analyze color under. Color is super complex. We want to look at this and, and break down the basics. We don't have to be a scientist about this. We don't have to be a light engineer. We just have to understand the variable so that way we can make better color picking decisions. So light impact on color is really important. And, and you're going to see, as like I said, these things kind of build on each other. So if I look at this red vehicle in front of me, this slide is showing four different types of sun, night, noon, fluorescent, sunset. I have four different Kelvin, Kelvin ratings or temperatures here. And each one of these is going to reflect something slightly differently. So this is, this is why it's important. If I have a guy color matching in one spot of the shop, and then he's refinishing in a different spot of the shop or looking at a different spot of the shop, I have a very good chance here that my color is not similar. So we have to make sure that where we're doing this color match every single time, we're using the right light source and we're doing a repeatable process. So here's kind of how we process and then we see color. So basically, um, the way it works is the human eye is only going to pick up uh, at the low end right around like 380, high end 720. Before that and after that, you can't pick it up so much. But what you're seeing is a byproduct of what is reflecting back. So in this case, you can see a banana falls in the 570 to 580 nanometer range. So what happens is our eyes perceive yellow because the light reflected back is the yellow spectrum. So like I said, this all matters. So when we're talking about color, and we're talking about uh, reflectance, Kelvin, hues, all these things, the number one thing that we never talk about, and I think that we just take it for granted, whether it be paint or distribution, we just say, okay, I wanna paint cars, or I wanna be a prep guy. We don't really ever take into consideration someone being deficient or efficient with color. So there's certain things in color blindness, and you can kind of see here, normal vision can see all the colors, red, green deficient, can't see red, green, blue, green deficient, can't see blue, green. These are the, the deficiencies that we can see. There's certain, there certain things that exist, i.e. what you're born with, you can't help if you were born colorblind. Certain diseases you can get through your life, sickle cell anemia, Alzheimer's, glaucoma, certain drugs, leukemia, alcoholism, they can start to distort the actual way you perceive color. Certain medications, and you guys are gonna see a really great graphic here towards the end that Jim is gonna present to you that really explains how some of these things, such as medication and, and, and things like that, can distort your color view. Um, aging, just as we get older, like everything else, we're not the same way we were when we were 10 or 20. As we start to age, we start to lose some, some color vision. And unfortunately, exposure to certain chemicals. Um, and you know, there's a fair amount of these. You can research some of this stuff and you can see if maybe some of these things you know, may potentially affect you, maybe come up with a list and, and stay aware of it because these are things that can affect our job. So this is a really important part. Um, as distribution and, and as painters, preppers, owners and body shops, we, we tend to get a lot of different tools, right? And uh, this light comes out and six months later we have a new option and it's great to have a variety out there. But when we're talking about the actual utilization of pro proper um, color looking at techniques, we have to make sure that there, the, the, the two things that we need here are in check. And the first thing is color temperature, known as Kelvin. And the second one, which you may or may not heard of, which is very important, is called the CRI, the Color Rendering Index. The best way to think of CRI is clarity. How clear do I see color? So your Kelvin is going to be a temperature. We all learned that in science when we were younger. And these are the measurements that we have to think about. So noon sun, we talked about sun a, a couple slides back. White is what we're looking for. It's the mix of all colors. It gives me every light spectrum. It forms a white light. So 5,000 to 5,500 Kelvin is undisturbed, pure, bright, white light. So artificial light, i.e. the sort of true sun, our booth lights, um, these are man-made. They're trying to replicate the sun. So the sun's going to run that 55, 5,600 Kelvin and a CRI of about 100. So we have to really make sure the tools we're using are as close to as possible for this replication. 
do not get to use Kelvin and lumens. That, that's something that, that you're going to see here momentarily uh, about that. So Kelvin is temperature and lumens is brightness. For some of you guys that are hunters, you may see, oh, this is a, a 10,000 candle power spotlight. That's based on lumens, not a temperature. So here's kind of how CRI looks broken down if you're not familiar with it. Basically, what it's doing is it's describing the effect of a light source and the way it makes that object appear. So the sun at noon is going to be right around 100. You can't have any more than 100. That's perfect clarity. Your top tier fluorescent bulb that you can buy for your shop will be right around 5,000 and a 90 plus. That is acceptable um, for color match to some extent or for, for color analyzation, but you want to get even better than that. CRI, this is important, is measuring 14 reference colors. This is going to be a critical number for you to remember when we get towards these final slides. So basically what happens is we all know simple math. How do you come up with an average? You take your 14, where do the 14 measure out in their criteria? And then we come up with an average. So the average is what's important for us when we're talking about CRI. And that's a mathematical scientific um, uh, equation. Halogens can only be measured in seven of 14. So this is something you want to be really hyper aware of. Halogen versus LED versus fluorescent. Halogen can only do seven. And that's that's important when you're talking about CRI ratings. So how does my light source actually affect my color match? Here's the first thing. And this is a really, really great chart. Because we're looking at color, um, colors are getting more complicated. Mazda 46V, Ford RR, Mazda 46G, you know, Ford Z9 and RZ and these candy colors. We have to make really sure that we don't have outside interference swinging us one way or another. And you can see on this chart, which is why I love it so much, the five to 6,000 K shows you 100% pure white clarity. If I start swinging below that, I start getting yellow, I start getting orange. If I swing above it, I start getting baby blue, I start getting darker blue. Why does that matter? Well, think about it. If I start to get this lower Kelvin rating, 4,000, 3,000, this is telling me this light source is automatically strong in yellow and it's gonna to wanna to reflect back more yellow based on the low temperature of the bulb. So this is important. If you see down here at the color temperature chart, this five up into 6,000, this is where you're staying in that white light. So how does it affect the color match? Again, CRI, this is a really great graph to use. You have really poor CRI, it's, it's bad CRI. This would be something that would be a very cheap bulb you would have potentially in your living room. Um, 55 and under, good is gonna be somewhere in that 60 to 85. Excellent, which is what we have to shoot for when it comes to collision shop and particularly matching colors because CRI reflects right to outside. If we can mimic CRI color clarity in the shop, we aren't going to have problems outside because that CRI is strong under the sun. So here's kind of what this would look like if you have both. So if you have 5,000 K natural from the sun, 5,000 K artificial from the light source that you're trying to use simulation on. If the Kelvin is the same, we have the same temperature. So we have the same per, per se whiteness. But if one of them has low CRI, the reflection is poor. So the sun obviously is perfect. It's got all the wavelengths that we need. We reflect back and we have red. You can see on the bottom, it has the correct 5,000 K whiteness, but it's got a low color rendering index. So what happens? It doesn't give me that pure red. It forms into an orange. So you can kind of see, here's a great example. We all know what an apple looks like. And you can see on this diagram, how CRI affects color going up. So we're shooting for that CRI of that 90 and up. So 97 Apple, you can see kind of how bright and vibrant that is. And as you go down through, you start getting not only dull changes, but you get hue changes. So that's why the CRI is so critical in color match. If you're sitting at a laptop or you're sitting in your desktop and you have the ability to either stand up above this or you can maybe uh, look across it, I would highly suggest that you do so. So I'll give you like 10 seconds to maybe move. You're gonna see something interesting here. I can I can promise you this is not a, a Photoshop trick. I didn't I didn't do this um, to, to manipulate anybody's uh, thinking process. You can make this yourself. If you have PowerPoint, you could even draw this if you wanted to. 
All this is is a yellow block and a blue block. That's it, that simple. And you're gonna notice something. When I do my next click there, you're gonna see this one continuous line running across the middle that's a gray shade. That gray shade, I promise you, is one shade of gray. It's not two, it's only one. Here's where the magic happens. The moment I put a black line up, you will be convinced that the actual arrow on the left became more blue or the arrow on the right became more yellow. That is not the case. Here's what's going on, and this is why I wanted to use the yellow-blue example. Your eye is can be tricked very easily, and we have to learn how to stop getting it tricked or make our environment set up so it doesn't get tricked so easily. This example here would illustrate, okay, I have a yellow car and a blue car, and they're side by side in my paint shop, and I'm gonna check my color chips or I'm gonna match them side by side. I have a really good chance here that the color behind me, maybe it's a yellow car or a blue car, is gonna disturb the way I'm seeing the color in front of me. The idea of this slide is to tell you that when you're looking at color, you wanna focus on only the one color. You don't wanna get your mind tricked by having a background color distract you or a color next to it distract you. You wanna make sure that you're only looking at, at one color at a time with, with as, as, limited, as limited distractions as you can get where you're doing your matching. Another great point there too, Danian, is, is the clothing that you wear when you're doing your color matching and the reflection great of point. you in the surface of the vehicle. That's a great point, Jim. And we actually had, when we last time we did this with Collision Hub, a guy had said that he noticed when he was matching whites that uh, he had a weird thing going on and he couldn't figure it out. And his shop shirts he was wearing were yellow and it was just, it was messing up his color matches. So. That's a great point, Jim. We have to think about what we're wearing and the way we're standing when we're analyzing color. So I can tell you that the last time we did this presentation, it went over so well that Pantone sold out of these things. If you've never heard of them, this is called a Pantone D65 lighting indicator. And this is kind of the cool thing. Most of us cannot go into our shop tomorrow and know what our CRI is, know what our Kelvin is. Our bulbs are old, you can't read them anymore. That's all well and good. They have tools for that. So the one that you see in front of you is a Pantone D65. These are little like one inch by one inch stickers. You buy them in a sheet. They're 55 bucks direct through Pantone. The D65 stands for 6,500 Kelvin. The D50 is, is the, the 5,000 Kelvin. You can use either one of these for match. Um, like Jim and I have talked about this. So the, the D50 is like a brown shade and some people tend to to pick up the brown shade better, whereas on your green shade, some people pick the, the green shade up better. So if you're ever unsure about how poor or how potentially good your lighting is, order a set of these stickers. They do come in kind of like a little manila envelope to be shielded from, from light, very important. You wanna make sure that you keep these things hidden from light because uh, they, they will wear out. Um, couple examples. now. These are really hard. These are really hard to capture with a phone, though, due to the fact that when you take a picture of these, they tend to overexpose. So you have to take my word for it, or I would highly suggest getting these. If you're a tech rep, if you're a guy that works with color a lot, uh, you can stick these in the area where a shop is doing color matching, and you can very quickly find out if he's got good or bad light. So this is what it looked like. One of our first shops that got these, this is several months ago, bought it and he thought that his shop lighting was great. This is what he had. I can tell you right now, this is about as bad as it gets. So um, even though the camera made it, makes it look slightly worse, this is still pretty poor even in real life. This is outside. This is on an overcast day. So his, his uh, light temperature outside would have been a little lower than 5,000. In real life, when you look at this, it's not quite this drastic. Like I said, you're gonna get some overexposure with the phone, um, but it still lets you know that, yeah, it was outside, it was a little cloudy, not most ideal uh, for this situation. This was in their shop. Ironically, this shop had uh, changed their bulbs uh, a few months before we did this first presentation, and they were really excited to see if the bulbs met up to their expectations. And in real life, you almost, almost cannot discern the difference between these two. So this shop has uh, spectacular, spectacular in-shop lighting to where they're able to look at a car or a chip really anywhere they feel like it and have confidence that 
they're going to have a good match. So we have to determine where and when we're going to do all this stuff. Um, obviously, we've all been through lots of different paint trainings. No matter the brand, we've all been through it. So you got to verify it during disassembly. The area in which you're matching, you have to make sure that you're five to your your five to fifty five hundred and ninety five plus on a CRI. Um, don't have other light sources that can cause an, an interference. The important thing there is if you have some fluorescent bulbs behind you, put them on a secondary switch and shut them down and use your true sun when you're checking this because if you have outside light interference, that can lead you the wrong way. Same location. This is one of the biggest SOPs every shop should have when you understand how important color analyzation is. Do this in the same spot every single time. Um, and if you can have a secondary spot, do that too. But make sure that the controlled spots exist and that you know where you can and cannot do color matching. Like we all know, don't wait until it's in the paint shop, especially in a booth. I've seen too many areas where the D65 stickers in a booth are terrible. Booth lighting doesn't necessarily have high CRI and high, uh, high Kelvin ratings. And since most of the, the LED ones now are getting better, the fluorescent ones, they will diminish. Um, so if a guy's curious about his booth lighting, hey, can I, can I trust color in here? Get the Pantone stickers, it will, that will be the determination. Always pick two people to verify, that should be an SOP. If, if you're lucky enough to, to have a, a woman at the shop and she's able to do this with you, by all means do it because her color eye is just better than us as, as men. How do you pick the right people, right? So let's say I'm just, I don't really know. My painter's a great painter, but he's got color problems sometimes, simple. So there's a couple of tests you can take. And now with the beauty of the internet, this Farnsworth Monza 100 Hue test is the one that all your paint companies, uh, they, they have these at their labs, they have them at the training centers. And these are a little bit more, uh, they're physical, they're on a board, you line them up and it gives you a score. Now, x right many of you may know the name x right because they uh, do a lot of the camera creations for the paint companies. They also have the Farnsworth test that you can do for free. Um, you wanna be aware when you do this that the whatever device you're using, whether it be a tablet or your laptop, that none of the screeners are on. So if you have like a blue light filter, uh, if you have some type of screen on your on your actual device, anything that can disturb the way you're seeing the color will alter the test. So make sure you're looking at it through uh, as pure a light as possible. And then your next one is going to be this N-chroma test. So very similar. Um, to the Farnsworth and the fact of it, it, it's testing you on color, but it's doing it in a different way. Now, here's the really, really cool thing about in Chroma, which I didn't mention to Melissa yesterday. Let's say you have a spectacular painter. He's really good. Um, the guy has almost no comebacks. Uh, he's spectacular, but he's got this little bit of a green red deficiency. Here is the beauty of N Chroma. You take this test, the painter will submit his results, and if he fails for a deficiency, they're able to build you a glasses, a set of glasses that will correct your deficiency for 200 bucks. Uh, so for you, if you have guys in shops that are struggling, for most guys, it's kind of like those red shades, um, that red green can, can be a problem. You can correct that with a set of color corrective glasses through this company, and it will be the best 200 bucks they ever spent because it's cheaper than a redeal. And so and I'd like to add too, I, I can attest to this because we actually got these glasses for my son-in-law this Christmas. Uh, his color deficiencies were bad enough. We weren't quite certain how bad. He took this Ishihara test with, and Chroma. They were able to lay out the lenses for him. We gave them to him as a Christmas present. And his life is actually spent in a room matching up colored wire, uh, working with, um, with internet systems. And all he ever said was, was the colors were muddy and they weren't vibrant, they weren't interesting. And once he put these on, it changed how he sees color and it did bring the vibrancy out on him and things stopped looking like mud. Jim, I'm glad you're on because I'm gonna pass these next slides to you. Yeah. So these, these next slides here that, uh, that Daniel is showing, uh, these are the test results from doing the Farnsworth Munzel 100 test at a uh, training center. I used to work for a paint manufacturer and uh, before we would do color class, we would give this test to our students. We gave them several options for lighting. Uh, we gave them as much time as they needed to accomplish the test. 
So understanding that we weren't optometrists, but we wanted a better understanding of how the students in the class were seeing color and how they were depicting color uh, gave us a better idea of how we needed to cater the class towards them. So the first one you see is what's known as a perfect test score. This was a student at, um, that got a score of zero. There was no color discernment issues whatsoever. He laid everything out in perfect order and, uh, and life was good. So zero is a perfect score. Zero, one to 20 is a very good score. And then you have average discernment, which would be 21 to 40, which is the second photo on here. You see the test scores at a 36. What we can gain from this is we can see that they have a red-blue color deficiency, um, almost a, a, a green shade blue color deficiency is where they peak, but they, they show deficiency areas in certain reds to the, uh, to the blue shade red. Um, and they also show a little bit of color issue with the yellow shade into green area. So that 36 is still a good score. They can still see color. It's just, those are their weak areas. If they're gonna struggle anywhere, pretty much I'll guarantee that that guy struggled with his blues. Next screen, Daniel. Right, the next one, okay. Yes, please. All right, give me a second. So this next one, you'll see that the test score is an eight. That, that superior to certain discrimination for color. This is a really good area to be in, but we can see the only weakness that this technician had was in the blue shade green region. So we can calculate just by seeing that, that that's where that, that technician is gonna struggle when he's color matching is those greens with that blue hue to it. Now the fourth and final one has a test score of 872. This isn't a joke, it's nothing funny, um, but it gets a lot of reaction when people see this. This is a true test score. And this was a technician that was actually a prepper that they were trying to train to become a painter, but was struggling with color match. And ownership and management had been getting frustrated with this technician and couldn't figure out why this technician couldn't pick out colors. So as the technician was going through and doing the rails, you can see on his test score uh, summary on the right side at the bottom, you can see that the numbers are all out of place. I stepped, to, stepped aside with the technician, asked him, is this really how you're seeing color or are you just not interested in this test? And the response was, yes, this is how I'm seeing it. What is wrong? I said, well, I don't know yet, but we'll figure it out. So we finished out the four rails for the test and the technician was graded. And at a break, we were able to step aside him and the, the actual painter for the shop. We started talking and we came to find out that that painter had had a drug addiction issue and an alcohol addiction issue and was on several medications for drug and alcohol abuse along with blood pressure medication. And when you looked at all those medications, one of the side effects that they could give you was it would decrease your ability to see color. Now, what I find interesting about the Farnsworth Munzel 100Q test is, is if you have the ability to take this test on a regular basis, one, it helps train your eye, two, it helps keep your cones in your eyes strong, and three, it'll help you predict how you are doing for that day. You have that ability to go back and take this test numerous times. I found that I could test as high as a three, and I would test as low as the, the high 30. So that all depended on my mood, how, the sleep that I got, my stress load, had I been out drinking the night before, what kind of foods was I eating, stuff like that really made a difference on how I could see color day to day. So knowing that this is out there and being able to utilize it on a regular basis is gonna help train us and keep us in good color practices. Excellent. So now we have to, we have to talk about corrective lights because this is really why everybody came and I wanted to go over all this kind of this back info because this is how we make the right decisions so we're going to talk about this true sun and here's what we have to notice here um cri value we know that we want to be over 95 we're 97 so we know that we're basically three points less than the sun that's pretty awesome color temperature 5600 kelvin we're over 5000 so i can tell you by the data on this light that we're 97 cri excellent color clarity 5,600 Kelvin, the light is white. I don't have interference from other uh, spectrums. I don't have a yellow shade. I don't have a blue shade. 
I have perfect temperature and I have great CRI. So the one that we all know the most about is obviously the sun gun. And interestingly can enough, being on- can, can we step back for a second, please? Sure, Jim. I to interrupt, but some of the nice features and benefits of this light also is, is it's not a two position light like a lot of the competitive lights out there. What it is though, is it's a nine position adjustable switch that's on the back side of the head. So it allows you to get the intensity of light for the conditions you're in to be able to see color the way you need to see it. I don't typically use this light the same way for color matches I would do for color coverage or model control and metallic orientation, stuff like that. So having a nine position adjustment allows me to go ahead and make this light work more for me and then be able to hand it off to somebody like you and you can then dial that light in for the way you see it. It's lightweight, it's also very durable. Uh, the battery charges in 45 minutes. It has a 70 minute runtime on high which it'll run on the high cycle for two minutes and shut itself off, just thinking that you forgot about it. But that increased time on that battery gives you the ability to select colors a lot more efficiently. And what you'll find because of the cleanliness of this light is the speed in which you'll pick up on that color match. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, and you know, kind of something else there on, on that, is the simple fact that what I love about it is there's no fan built in. So when we're going in the booth, shutting our light off, checking for coverage, a lot of times if I have a, a, a uh, light that's powered by a fan to cool the bulb, I have a, a very big probable, probable chance of blowing dust out of that thing into my finish work. So you don't have that problem when you're running LED. So the sun gun, this was really interesting. When I did this, obviously being in distribution, like many of us are, I had to do some research here. and. Uh, with the SADA, I was able to get online, pull it up, boom, no problem. Unfortunately, with the sun gun, uh, I couldn't find, I could not find any of the Kelvin data. So, got on the website, messaged them. I talked to this guy. We had two conversations. The first one, I didn't get a chance to screen grab, so I had to kind of hit him back again. He was able to give me CRI 99. That's great. That's great CRI. But unfortunately, he could only give me lumens and lumens don't translate into Kelvin. And that's kind of what we had, had talked about. So I'm not, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the sun gun. What I'm saying is that if you have one of these, if you have a shop that has one of these and they're having color problems, then I would highly suggest getting that uh, sun gun under a Pantone sticker and determining if this thing is capable or not, because the life on that bulb is, is limited. And now, you know, with some of the, tricks coming out where their their aftermarket companies are, are providing bulbs for them and rewiring them. Nobody can answer at all what that Kelvin is going to be. Uh, and now you start changing other things about the gun. You don't know what the CRI is. So we're just taking somebody's word for it. And that's something we're able to test in a shop. So that's the number one piece of advice I would give if you're running this uh, light or you're running this light modified because the battery had been dying and they did some changes, get it under a Pantone sticker. Um, because if it fails that test, you're going to want to go to to a light that won't fail that test, such as True Sun. This is the one I, I really liked talking about the most. And when we put this together, I had to do a lot of research um, on these things because it's you know it's not something that we really think so much about. We just take people's word that it works. We're all familiar with this tool. You'll see them on Instagram. You see them in your shops. You see them on Facebook groups. You see them everywhere. So what's the deal? I had to do some research here and, and these are on the box. Tech specs are on the box. You're gonna find something interesting here in the very first line, CRI plus. So I, got, I want everybody here to remember the term CRI plus. So they're saying they have a 96 rating of CR, CRI plus uh, and it, under spotlighting it says 95 CRI. The Kelvin is 2,565 under the spot setting it's 4,000. It's got a lumen setting in there or a lumen rating in there for some odd reason. Um, now here's the here's the graph that matters. I, don't, I wouldn't care if this thing was 100% perfect Kelvin um, or anything like that. This is what matters. R1 through R14 are the actual values, and you can look this up, um, that they actually measure CRI on. These are the color ratings. So you're gonna have 
your different shades, your main colors, your yellows, your reds. But then there's something called R15, and it does exist. But as we all know, many of you may know a scientist or you, you've dealt with scientists, they're very specific. And scientists have to be able to always go back to their constant. So my R10 value, that yellow is gonna be a constant that's measurable against that, it doesn't change. R15 is skin tone. As we all know, none of us have the same shade of skin. I can't have a constant for something that's always a variable. However, if my CRI is low, the easiest way for me to boost its score is to bump in a high number. So if you'll notice here, R10 is yellow, one of the most important things for us, 92. One of the other ones important, R12, is an 80. Uh, that's not a good score. That, that's gonna tell me, just by me looking at this and understanding CRI, Having a really high red, 99, great, excellent number, a low yellow and a low blue, here's what it tells me. If I'm gonna look at a blue shade car or a blue yellow shade car with this light, it's immediately gonna make the chip appear more red. It's going to draw the red out because it has such a high ability of CRI R9. That's a problem. So, I, if you have a shot or you are a painter and you have this, I would never say go throw it in the trash. I would never say anything like that. But I would tell you that this would be a great light to have to check for coverage, uh, to walk around your, your bumper cover edges, you know, to make sure you get that, that sealer spots covered up or the primer spots covered up. I would never in a million years um, recommend this for color match uh, for the sole reason that once you see this R15 value, the CRI can't be trusted. So with that, with that being said, um, we had a couple shops that went through this the first time we did it like last year. And a lot of the guys had this and never even thought about it. A bunch of the guys in the group wound up at some point buying True Sons and overnight, the way they looked at color totally changed. So uh, that pretty much covers that. That was uh, right around 40 minutes. So if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer them, and I'm sure uh, Jim would as well. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I, I would like you to just maybe mention where everybody can get the Pantone lighting indicator stickers again. Oh, sure. So the Pantone stickers, you would get them um, direct through Pantone's website. If you just Google, Google uh, Pantone lighting indicators, their website will come up direct. Like I said, last time we did this, they were sold out for... I don't know, it was like well over well over a month before they got back in stock, but they should be there now. Okay. So I don't see any questions. Come on, guys. Wanna ask Daniel or Jim anything? Well, I will follow up by sending you their information as I always do. And we will also be in touch with dates um, and information on part two, because this was a series and, and maybe you can talk a little bit about what part two is gonna cover. Yeah, so uh, basically, like like Melissa had said, this was a four-part series that we did um, for Collision Hub that, as, as part of the group that, that I moderate. And it's basically the way it came about was we pulled the guys and said, what would you like to see? And they said, we want to know everything that you could possibly know about color that has nothing to do with physically tinting a color. So it's basically a four-part series that talks all about the things that can affect the color match in your shop uh, positively or negatively. And then we did a final one, which was part four that we just did um, maybe like two months back, which is actually uh, a very in-depth tinning class that gets not only into tinning, um, but I would call it advanced color theory because it's it's a really dynamic look at color. So there's a total of four parts to this. Um, this is also available. You can buy, you can actually buy this uh, on Collision Hub, it's eight hours. It's like 150 bucks, I think, if you were to buy it. Um, but we we can do that this way too. I would probably say that if we do, if everybody wants to do the second one, I'll be more than happy to do it. We probably just can't record the second one um, and the third one and the fourth one because it would be a little bit of a conflict there. Okay, okay. Um, but I, I can also send everybody the slides for this presentation too. So I'll, yeah. I'll send those up, uh, send those out as a follow up. Okay, well, I don't see any questions. Um, Daniel and Jim, thanks so much. Thanks everybody for joining us and we'll be in touch when we uh, are ready with part two. 
Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.